Welcome back. I'm glad you were able to join us today. Today's lesson is gonna be covering landforms, the different kind of landforms, specifically in Spain. Well, as you can see, we're not here in Spain, but we can still talk about the different kinds of landforms that we're gonna be experiencing as we travel through Spain. You're gonna see different things such as valleys and mountains. You're gonna experience plains. And then at the end of it, you're gonna be able to create your own type of landform. Ready to go on this journey? Let's go. One of the resources that you will find in the folder is called Landforms of Spain Vocabulary Cards. In this resource, you will find vocabulary words that you're going to need throughout this lesson, including mountains, valleys, and plains. You will also be able to travel through the different and beautiful landforms of Spain, including the valleys of Spain, Barcelona, Spain. You'll also notice the hills of Seville, Andalusia, Spain and you'll be able to travel through and see some of these different things. Now, you're going to be using a lot of these vocabulary words as you create your lesson. Stay tuned. So I had to stop at this place as I was on this nature hike because I noticed this gorgeous view and it reminded me of the views of one of the vocabulary cards that we were looking at earlier. This would be an example of a valley. So a valley is a low area between two mountains and usually there's a river running through it. So I would have to continue to explore some more to see if there actually is a river flowing through that. But I want you to think about this view as you are creating your example for landforms. Let's continue to walk. In this next section, you're gonna learn about the different Spanish composers and their birthplaces in Spain. I'm gonna hand it over to Mr. Gonzalez as he goes into more detail of the music and the sounds of Spain. Thank you, Ms. Anaya. I hope you enjoy your walk over there at the park, enjoying the landforms of Texas. Let's take a look and compare some of the landforms from Spain and Texas by meeting our composers. All right. One of the cool things about uh, our composers from Spain is that they cover a different many of genres of music within the Spanish culture. Here's our little document that you have there in your folder, in your Spain folder for this lesson. And let's check it out and let's go through the cards. Here's Victor Prieto. He's a Grammy Award winning artist, skilled accordionist and composer. Composer means that they write music. That's pretty cool, right? His love for the traditional Galatian music and classical education enriches his compositions with explosive rhythm and colors uniquely combining Galatian roots, Celtic, Brazilian, jazz, tango, and classical music. He's New York based, but he's a native of Galatia, Spain. He actually currently also goes back and forth because he now teaches in Spain one of the universities. It's pretty cool. Let's take a look at the map of Spain and see where he's from. So you can see he's from the northern part on the tip of Spain. And you can see the picture, it's very mountainy. It looks like it's rocky, there's a river running through it. In Galatia, Spain, there are many rivers, mostly running down relatively gentle slopes 
in a narrow river valley. However, Galatia is quite mountainous. The interior of Galatia is hilly landscape composed of relatively low mountain ranges. The main mountain range is known as Masillo Galicio Leones. Wow, that's pretty cool, guys. Let's check out our next artist, Alberto Iglesias. Now, this composer writes music for movies. He's written music, for, he's, he's, he's nominated for Academy Award, and he's written music for The Constant Gardener, The Kite Runner, and The Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy. These are Spanish films. His birthplace is San Sebastián, Spain. By the way, in each one of these cards, there's a YouTube video so you can check out some of their music. Let's look at the map and see how a picture where he's from. Ooh. So he's a, a coastal town. So he's from the coast. He's from uh, San Sebastián is, is in Spain. It's located on the southern coast of Bay of Biscay. And you can see a, a circle right there on the map. It's on the northern tip of, of, of Spain. It looks like it's close to uh, France, but it's on a coastal town. So that's pretty cool, right? Can you think of some areas here in Texas that, that are coastal? You guys have been to Corpus at Port A. That's a coastal area. Alonso Mudera. Now we're going to go back in time and we're going to learn about this Spanish composer. He's a viruelist of the Renaissance. Now that was a long time ago. If you look at the years, he lived between 1510 and 1580. He was an innovative composer of instrumental music. He was a composer of the earliest surviving music of guitar. Oh, so he was one of the earliest guitar players. <laughs> That's pretty cool. There's a YouTube link there for his music. But look, if you look at his, where he's from, uh, it looks like he's from like right in between where our first two composers are from, but in the northern part too. He's from the city of Valencia. Valencia is a city found in Castile in Leon, Spain. Uh, Valencia lies in the north of central Spanish plateau, the Mestil Central, in the middle of the Caron River Valley. Two hills surround the city in its northeast area. Another large agricultural province with cereal growing plains to the south and mountains on the north, the countryside is sparsely populated with nearly half the population of the province living in the capital city of Valencia. Wow. Alejandro Sainz is our next artist, our composer. He's a Spanish singing songwriter musician. He's one of my favorites, actually. Sainz has, has won a total of 17 Latin Grammys and three Grammy Awards. He's born in Madrid. He intended to become a flamenco performer. That's from the video that we just saw from our concert. But he found that music teachers were too strict. How funny is that, right? He felt that he could not compete with his peers, so he decided to focus on creating music, making music on his own, with Spanish, with flamenco influences. His birthplace, again, is Madrid. Let's take a look at the map. So it looks like it's right in the middle of Spain. And if you look at the mountains, I mean, if you look at the picture, it's very mountainy, it looks like. So it seems like to be a lot of mountains in Spain. And it looks like there's, it looks like it's called, it's got six peaks. It's called six picos, or we call it peaks. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Madrid's average altitude is 650, but it's very mountainous area of Spain. Let's look at our, our next artist, composer. Laura Bal is an indie pop artist from Barcelona, Spain, with more than 10 years of experience. Her lyrical, warm, soulful, hypnotic voice has brought her to work with some great artists such as Stevie Wonder, Rhonda Smith, Michael Bland, and Grammy Award-winning producers Jeff Weber and Michael Clark. Wow, she's, she's, really, she's really good at what she does. But she's from Man Manrisa, Spain. There's a YouTube uh, link to check out her music. And there's her birthplace. That's a picture of where it's at. Another mound type. But this mound looks kind of different. It's got... Look like it's got like uh, some kind of bush and some kind of it's rocky, nice views. I don't see a lot of trees there, but it seems like most of Spain are a lot of where our composers are coming from where it's very mountainy. Can you think of some areas in Texas where it's full of mountains? I could think of some areas, but anyway, but it's really cool to come just visit this and check this out. But uh, let's turn it back over to Miss Anaya. Miss Anaya, thank you for this opportunity and enjoy your walk, Miss Anaya. All right, back to you. Now that you've learned about the different landforms using the vocabulary cards and also learned about the birthplaces of those composers, the Spanish composers, the activity is for you to actually create a landform. Okay, so you are going to be using whatever materials that you can find. So it could be anything from kinetic sands, making your own sands out of salt. That would be a nice science experiment. Um, you can also use things in nature. Okay, so you're going to look for things to be able to create your landform. And your landform, remember, is going to either represent a mountain, a valley, or a plain. But part of the activity is also being able to label the different parts. So think back to those vocabulary words that you have 
and think how you're going to label the different parts of a mountain or a valley or a plain. Um, and then you're going to use um, some different apps that you could use to talk about these landforms that you created. So make your landforms come to life, basically. One of the apps that I would recommend you trying is called Chatterpix. So it's a free app. It's a really neat app that you can take a picture of your landform and then you can make that landform come to life. Now it doesn't have to be that either. You can also create uh, a movie with it or videotape yourself as, you know, what would this landform say? You know, put yourself in the perspective of this landform and what would the landform actually talk? So if, if, it, was, if it was a mountain, what would, the, what would that mountain say? If it was uh, a valley and it was, there was a river down below, what would that river say? So think about all the different things that you can create and add to yours we're excited to see some of those and hopefully your teachers will be able to share those with us. Have fun. We hope you enjoyed today's lesson on the landforms of Spain and learning about the different Spanish composers. We're excited to see all your creations and the different perspectives that you have taken on these landforms. Join us on our next adventure as we continue this journey through Spain.